So the transfer when Princeton players have graduated because of the Ivy transfer rules, they go off to other pastures. He just develops young guys. McMeekin and Weirman will face off on the Big M, and we are underway. Weirman scoops it to his teammate, and he picks it up. Weirman dominated McMeekin in the first meeting back in February. Between these two teams, and Maryland gets on the board just like that. It's Jack Chorus. Cadillac finds the back of the net. That's what they needed. Everyone's been asking, where has the Terps offense gone? Well, you find a non-traditional set right off the face-off. Chorus is the chameleon of all the midfielders, can play offense, defense, and wings. He won that Penn State game in the regular season by instant. Ball hit the back of the net. The skies opened up within the last 10 minutes, and now they're clearing out a little bit. We've got a rainbow on the horizon, the sun coming in a little bit from the uh, west. It's really an odd weather night here. That's a big win for McMeekin. The last time they played these two teams earlier in the season, Weirman and McMeekin faced off 16 times. Weirman won 15 of them. Yeah, Weirman was 20 of 23 in total for that game, Clark, and Princeton just had no answer for them as Maryland went on to win 13 to 7. That came back on February 24th. Six years later, that Princeton unit and those guys who graduated, You'd love to know their net worth. If you ever need a loan, call one of those guys. They might be able to help you out. Weirman again. This time he opts to pass it off, and a goal by Maryland. Twice off the faceoff. First it was Cadillac Chorus, and now Daniel Kelly with two goals in a row. The Terps are up three to nothing in this game, despite having very little going right for them in the offensive end. You gotta love the pop. From the senior, Daniel Kelly had the game-winning goal against Virginia a season ago. He's a left-handed hired shooter who could sting the bottom corner. And this shows you the value of Luke Weirman, the KG vet. Luke Weirman is an elite face-off man, has won more than any Turk player ever. But he is a lacrosse player with big-time skills and the ability to hit and transition. So that is a Luke Weirman type of presence goal. Two goals in five seconds, and two of the three goals immediately off the faceoff. Princeton trying to get one back. Third most points ever in Princeton history for a first year player behind Michael Sowers and Kevin Lowe. Weirman crafty, wins it to himself, gets it to a teammate. Siracusa gets a step on his defender, thought he might let that one rip. Instead gets it behind the 232 minutes of it, and it continues tonight. You know what I love about Eric Spanos, too? If you look at the scouting report, he's a heavy right-handed player. Dodged up that left goal line extended area. You see the hard work, the dedication. I remember talking to John Tillman one time this spring, well after practice. I heard something in the background. I asked him what it was. He said, well, Spanos is still on the... There's 14 Big Ten schools, one male, one female. And he is the male athlete at Maryland receiving that Medal of Honor. It's academics. It's community service. It's success on the field. He checks every box. We know about him as a first-team All-American, top PLL draft pick. He's quite the young man, Cotter. Is for certain, he is a decorated Maryland Terrapin, that is for sure. When Chorus is hitting the back of the net, it just tells you there's a very type approach offensively. Battle for the loose ball, no possession yet, still nothing. Still no possession. The Terps come out of there with it, it's Maltz. It's a great grounder by the senior Danny Maltz. Kid is tough, bounce back. He was a starter in 2021, more of a reserve in 22, and then back to the starting lineup the last couple years. Great off ball for the Terps the last six weeks. Play with this type of urgency offensively. And Merriman.
Bryant is picking up where he left off when these two teams met in February. He's won six of eight at the faceoff dot. And they give him another win. They're dominating possession in this game, Clark. And Wehrman can shoot like he does right now and misses it wide. Don't underestimate the journey and path of Luke Wehrman. As a freshman in 2021, when it was a one-goal game against Virginia in the national championship, do you remember who took the last shot? And it was right down to the last millisecond. Yep, that was Luke Wehrman. It was devastating for him the year after against Cornell in the national championship. They were a big on Michigan at one time, 10-2, and they held on. Yeah, Michigan came back to make that, I think, a three-goal game before Denver was able to pull away in the fourth quarter. Weirman here trying to get a shot off, lost it out of the back of his cross. Princeton coming up with it. Weirman's dominating face-offs. Eight out of ten face-offs. He's been automatic. Princeton doesn't have a shot in this quarter because of Luke Weirman. I think this is the first. It looked like Kelly wanted to dump that in the corner, then at the last second he said, Why oh, not? Maybe we can get it to Spanos. Let's give it a shot. And it worked. Like pretty much everything else is working for the Terps tonight. Out shooting Princeton nine to nothing in this second quarter. When you have Luke Wehrman playing like this, it doesn't matter what type of offense the other team has. And now what's gonna happen is this offense with Jimmy Mitchell, their offensive coordinator, ball maybe at like, you know, nine o'clock or three o'clock. With Jimmy Mitchell's offense, it's at 10 and two. Those guys are catching that ball with way more to look at. Loose ball push against Princeton on the faceoff. Wehrman again pads what was already a gaudy stat. 10 of 12. You want to attack the ball with the head of your stick. I don't think he ever saw the release. I think Billings had him completely shielded from it. Nightmare first half continues. After John Procaro and this Princeton Tigers team. This is crazy. I did not see this coming. lost it good timing with a minute eight seconds left to go in this first half to burn that final time out talk about a flip of the script that was going through Princeton's numbers offensively the last four games Maryland only broke double digits in the last four games once against Rucker he scored a left dancing on him Meekin too quick on the whistle. Another one goes to Weirman. You know, McMeekin coming into this game, the last month has been red hot. Red hot, like a strength. Your, your strengths and your technique and your form. He has one save on the night. Watch out here. He can shoot. Nice job by Princeton to prevent that from happening. Final 15 seconds. Can the Tigers get something out of this position? here and get some momentum going into the half. Wait, he'll shoot and score! Something to cheer about for the Tigers with three seconds remaining. This is a big time talent in college lacrosse as a freshman. Tucker Wade burst on the scene early this season. Such a two-handed player. He can let it rip lefty, he can let it rip righty. And boy, oh boy, did they need that goal. It'll be interesting, too, at halftime in terms of what Princeton does. I know Gio's their guy, but he has one save, 11 goals against. Matt Madelon is a goalie. Their head coach played the position. He knows the position better than anyone. The fact of the matter is, though, he's going to have to figure this one. Dislodging the ball and really frustrating the star from Princeton. Luke Weirman has been a buzzsaw. He's the most experienced face-off man in college lacrosse. 
the four-year starter. Now off the opening face off another opportunity. And how about John Ricardo making that save? Well, that's huge. Only his second of the day, and that's big for Princeton. Yeah, and it was a Weirman win to a chorus off the wing pass from Weirman to a step off. And they're going with him again. So Weirman now goes against Sandoval, and Weirman wins it easily to himself. Not deflected, though. A turnover. Take it any way you can. It's all about the possession. Ladies, Alexander Vardaro, Graham Bundy Jr. We have them tomorrow, Cotter. That was a great piece, too. You know what I loved about it? Jack Rowlett was cleaning people up, even as a little <laughs> kid, right? But as a kid, <laughs> yeah, he's doing the same thing. That's great. Luke Weirman was drafted 25th overall by the Outlaws, and right now putting a smile on Coach Sudan's face yeah. with his play tonight. Coach Jim Stagnita. Stags is smiling too, watching Ajax yeah. Zapatella. I got a lockdown guy at number three. No doubt. I think Coulter Mackesy has to be an attackman moving forward. And I'll tell you what, Ajax Zapatello is leaving College Park after this season. He wears that magical number one for Maryland. Eric Spanos might have a case. Okay. To be decided in the offseason. Adam takes off that Maryland jersey for good. Replaces it with the Whipsnakes jersey in the PLL. Princeton with possession off of that faceoff, which is a rarity in this game. Lead for Maryland. Now, middle of the offense is open, so he he works really hard to get inside. It's just too late, and I thought the pass by McAsey was perfect. Faceoff one by Princeton, but now it's back on the ground. That looked like Kobe Ginder who took that draw for the Tigers. That's tough when you win a faceoff and you can't win the possession. McDonald loses the stick and loses the ball, though. So he has to get out of the play, and Princeton will pick up the loose ball. Double more on defense. The problem is they're not used to doubling. They're not a they're not a double team type of, of oriented defense. They like to put their guys out on an island. They don't slide much. They rely on their goaltender. So now you're asking their defense to kind of get out of their comfort zone. Slide early and double. It's not something they're accustomed to. First possession of the second half to Maryland. Can they clear it at the 62nd mark? They do. And all kinds of trouble here. They turn it right back over. Now Kabiri. You'll wait for help. But you've safeguarded yourself in the event that Princeton gets the ball. You can go into your ride and you won't get burned by any fast breaks if you don't cash in offensively. So it's almost twofold for me. If I'm Maryland, heavy dose of the invert game, attacking from behind the cage. To your point on Molliver, all three of his goals tonight have been unassisted. He's won matchups. This has been the best he's played. He was a big-time recruit. He had the knee injury a season ago, and that takes time to come back. But he looks like he has pep in his step. He's got the, the iPad probably five times by the time he addressed uh, yeah, Owen no Murphy. <laughs> AI. <laughs> Everything's AI these days. Even Till's flagged down. The late call going against Princeton. We got a late hit here, and it was a big down behind the play in the defensive end. Now he trots off. You don't want that guy injured. He's the keys to your postseason run in terms of possession, creating runs, stopping runs. Favorite because they're at home and they're the, the team that is the seventh seed. They're the seeded team. Let's get the call. Black, three, five, black. It's going to go against Sandoval. Weirman's back out there. Gets cross check. That's a good call. That's yeah, blatant. Cross -check. blatant. I, I agree with you. I also think you can't underestimate John Tillman as a, as a coach in the playoffs, right? In the tournament, he's, he's masterful. He's been the smiley coming into this game. Season high, 15 goals. Just keeps chugging right along. You know, 
what's going to be interesting to see is what they do next week. Braden Erbs have played a full week. Do they move him back to attack? Catch and shoot in the same motion. McMeekin back out to take this draw against Weirman. McMeekin looked like he was going to pick it up. Instead, it's McDonald. And that'll be Weirman's 20th win of a faceoff, which is that ties the Maryland postseason record set by Brian Haggerty back in 1998. Weirman continues Maryland's dominance on the night. 16-6, Terps on top. That ball from his stick with his off hand, that is not normal. And when you watch him play in his hands and his, and his technique, you cannot tell what hand that guy is. Shane Keithler taking that draw for Maryland and wins it.